What's up, beautiful people? Hope you're all having a wonderful day. The Trading Champ back here to go over another video with y'all. I want to go over this strategy lesson going over the opening range breakout. The opening range breakout is a very simple strategy that a lot of beginners can use, people that don't have a lot of knowledge in the market, and kind of use it to their advantage to find an edge on their everyday strategy. Now, what I'm about to teach you is not a 100% win rate strategy. Let me repeat that. This is not going to work 100% of the time. But through years of experience and a lot of time looking at the charts, you can really use this opening range breakout trading strategy to your advantage every day. And I'm going to go over exactly how I do this strategy and use it to my advantage in the markets to where you can then take a lot of value from this and actually put it towards your trading strategy today. If you do enjoy this strategy lesson and you do like the information that you are receiving, if you don't mind leaving a like and maybe even a comment, letting me know what you liked about the video or any questions that you have so I can go more in depth about other strategies and maybe even more in depth on this strategy to answer your questions. Let's get right into the strategy lesson over the opening range breakout. So first things first, the number one thing that you have to do is identify your opening range. Your opening range all comes down to your first 15 minutes of market open. So when market opens up at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, you wanna wait for your first 15 minute candlestick to form like this one here before taking any trades. The first 15 minutes of market open is extremely volatile and the contract spread price is pretty insane. So wait for your first 15 minute candlestick to form before taking any trades for this exact reason. Your next step is you have to identify your actual opening range off that first 15 minute candlestick. So what you want to do is you want to mark your 15 minute high and your 15 minute low at the bottom of the candlestick. And yes, you're going to use the wicks. So literally the very low of the 15 minute time frame and the very high of that 15 minute time frame. And once you mark the high and low of that 15 minute candlestick, that is going to be your opening range. Okay, so now you're wondering, champ, what do I do from here? How do I identify an opening range breakout? And that's going to be your step three. Once you see a breakout above or below this 15 minute opening range, that's where you're going to change your daily bias. Now, this doesn't mean just enter puts as soon as it breaks or enter calls as soon as it breaks. You want to use this 15 minute opening range breakout to your advantage to see what the overall bias on the day is and see where you believe market's going to go from that point. And as long as we are trading within this 15 minute opening range, so let's say an hour goes on and the market has not seen a breakout of this range, you want to stay away. Way. And whenever I give you some examples later on in this video, you're going to see how this no trade zone is actually going to help out to your advantage and how you can really find confirmation on these trades. So again, you've marked your 15 minute high, you've marked your 15 minute low, and you're not going to trade within this zone at all. As long as price is trading within this zone, you are going to stay away. All right, step four. Now this is going to be the most crucial step yet because a lot of traders lose on this strategy and this strategy is a very common strategy. So a lot of people know it, but a lot of people do lose lose because they do not avoid getting faked out. When it comes to any strategy that you have, confirmation is absolutely key because if you don't get that 15, 30 minute candle close above or below a level, you're probably going to get you know counted as liquidity or just get faked out in general and it's going to go in the opposite direction. And here is actually a prime example. You have candlestick one here. This is your 15 minute opening candlestick. We see a break below with no confirmation because it was not a 15 minute candle close and you know it's still closing as a green candlestick in general. And then we we see more upside after that breaking out of your 15 minute opening range to new highs. And this is pretty common because a lot of people do use this 15 minute, even a 30 minute opening range strategy. So market makers are going to fake you out by pushing below that previous low getting liquidated, liquidating all longs on this, and then pushing us up to higher highs. And for someone that's been in the market for four years now, I see this exact thing happen all the time. There's actually been times where once I see the liquidity get grabbed and we break below and they instantly buy us back up, I'll just get in on the buyback and take the risk of more upside. So again, confirmation is key. Please, please, please wait for a 15 minute or a 30 minute candle close above or below your opening range before determining your daily bias. Hell, you can even wait for an hourly close over that range. This range is going to be really key for your overall day. So waiting for those large time frame candle closes is crucial. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about number five, which is actually executing and playing the breakout that happens on the 15 minute opening range. You can simply play the breakout once you get a 15 minute candle close above or below, but let's go ahead and take a look at example one to see how this would play out. All right, so let's get into our first example. So this candlestick right here is our first 15 minute candle. That's our 15 minute session. We're going to go ahead and mark our 15 minute candle high 
and our 15 minute candle low. We also had a gap up overnight. So we do know, you know, just going off of simple um, technicals, this is a very, very, very important demand zone here. There is a lot of buyers in this zone. This is typically an imbalance. It's not really a demand zone. It's more of an imbalance, um, but there is going to be a lot of buyers in that zone. So if we go ahead and press play, let's go ahead and see what happens next immediate breakdown, but immediate buyback. Okay. Next candlestick. Let's see what happens. Okay. This is where it gets tricky. I said it in the last slide. If we are in this zone here, this is a no trade zone. And if we break below and we see a fake out, you know, and an instant buyback like this, I want to see how the next candlestick reacts. Are we going to end up breaking out of this no trade zone back down for confirmation for downside? Let's see. Are we going to continue up? And that was actually a fake out and we'll continue to upside. Obviously, I already know what happens. I've already seen this example played out, but let's go ahead and press play and see what happens next. Okay, next candlestick breaks into there. You're still not long yet because there's no 15 minute close. Next candlestick here, 15 minute close. You can go long. Let's go ahead and long this. Um, there's no price target here. I'm not going over crazy technicals here, but I will show you that my stop loss would be this low here. It'd be right underneath this 15 minute low. If we press play, we can see that we continue up higher and higher, end up hitting price target, whatever. But you guys get the point. This isn't a crazy technical analysis strategy I'm trying to show you. It's simply just playing the 15 minute opening range. You know, and I don't like to play specific levels off of this. I like to see how price reacts. I would never buy puts off of that break because of that instant buyback. But if we would have saw a rejection here, come back below this level, then I would start playing shorts down to fill this gap and then more, you know, to another demand zone from there. Um, but again, you can avoid getting faked out by waiting for that 15 minute candle to close. And if you see it get instantly bought back, stay away until we get a break back below this range. All right, we moved me to the top of the screen because of where I put this slide. You can't see the example. And we don't really need to use this example specifically on a chart, but I can show you on here. But let's get into step number seven. So the next way you can play this strategy is to play the retest of that opening range breakout. So another way you can play this strategy is by prioritizing the retest as your entry point instead of the simple breakout, which is a lot more risky. So if we take a look at this example of playing the retest instead of the breakout, we can see here on the Apple 15 minute time frame, we have a candlestick here for the 15 minute opening session. We have the high marked out and the low marked out. And once we saw a breakout, instead of playing longs off that breakout, which is a little more risky, you can wait for price to see significant upside and wait for a retest of that opening range breakout like we did here. 15 minute close confirmed. We continued up, came down and retested it here. Successful retest for more upside from there. You're going to notice by playing this strategy that you're going to see that these levels get used as support and resistances pretty often. There's pivot points happening at these levels all the time. And you'll see when price gets back into that no trade zone, it's going to be choppy and there's not going to be a direction. So you can use that no trade zone to make sure you do not take a trade until you see a breakout of one direction or the other. All right, the next slide. This is where it gets a little less fun but it's number eight. When do you not trade the orb or the opening range breakout strategy? The opening range breakout strategy will not work 100% of the time. I know that sucks to say, but there is not a single strategy out there that will work every single time. But this is how I use my opening range breakout strategy to my advantage every single day. Regardless of the direction of the breakout of this opening range, I don't take trades off of it specifically. I use the opening range to determine my daily bias. Identifying the overall trend of the market is so important and is extremely vital to your success if you're trying to make money as a trader. And typically, when we see an opening range breakout happen, whether it's the upside or the downside, we typically see a trend day. So when I see, sometimes I'll even use a one hour opening range you can do, right? When you see us trading in the same range, whether it's an hour, two hour, four hour daily, there's a range. When you see a breakout of one direction or the other, you're looking for an overall trend. But you can't just play the breakouts, y'all. Breakouts happen every single day, all the time. You have to know when to play a breakout. Is it going to be a high volume breakout with a low volume retest onto that previous high, right? Or vice versa to the low? There's different situations that you can look at, and we can go into depth and more detail in another video. But there are so many different um, types of trading strategies you can use with this orb, with this opening range breakout. The next step is one of the 
the most crucial steps in this entire strategy, and that is going to be your risk management within the opening range breakout. Because this can be a killer strategy. You can make a lot of money using it to your advantage, but if you do not have proper risk management, just like any type of trading strategy, you'll lose your marbles and you will have zero dollars left at the end of the day. So again, we're looking at this same QQQ chart we were looking at before, but let's take a look at how we would have proper risk management here. If I'm going to enter a long off of that 15 minute opening range breakout, I'm going to put a stop loss below the 15 minute opening range low. So right below it, because they will try to grab liquidity maybe. So maybe just a little lower, but right below that level. And you're going to put your price target. You need to have a pretty good risk to reward ratio here. I wouldn't do a one to one. I would look for like a three risk to reward, you know, one to three risk one to make three. Um, because I really think that your opening range, depending on how wide it is, your stop loss is going to vary because let's say your opening range is all the way down here. It's kind of hard to have a trade like this, right? Where the risk to reward is only all of this red to only make a little bit of this white. It's not worth it. You want to only play an opening range that's tighter so you can have a tighter stop loss. So if anything does not go your direction, you won't lose a ton of money because again, the strategy is not 100% spot on. It doesn't work 100% of the time. And if it was just as easy to play the opening range every day and play off the opening range, you'd be rich. We'd all be rich, but that's not the case. The case is you can use these levels and this range to determine the overall daily trend, which is the most important thing when it comes to actually trading and making money every single day. The trend is your friend. I'm sure you guys have heard it many times. And if you're not trading the trend, then you're losing a lot of money. So again, when I play the breakout of the opening range, I always set my stop loss at the opposite opening range higher or low to ensure that my risk is definitely worth the trade that I'm taking. All right, guys, time to review. I think I've done pretty well of explaining myself. But just in case I didn't, here we go again. Number one, you're going to find your opening range. Okay. You're going to find that 15 minute candlestick. You're going to mark the high and you're going to mark the low. Okay. Of that 15 minute candlestick in your opening range. You're going to wait for a breakout of that range to the upside or the downside and then wait for some type of retest or successful strong candlestick close before entering any type of position. And after watching this video, I actually just noticed that I missed a number in here. If I go back, you can see I skipped six. There's just five and seven. So can we just forget that six exists in this example? <laughs> Anyways, hopefully the whole review makes sense. Literally these four steps, there's more steps in this video, but the, these are the four main steps that actually revolve you making that opening range breakout work. Um, the other few steps that I had after four are just me explaining how to use it and examples of how to use it and really what you can do in your trading strategy to find an edge with it. I appreciate every single one of y'all tuning in. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it. The more support that I get on these videos, the more videos that I'll make for y'all, and the more time I will take to make these videos for you all so you can get a ton of value from it. If you do want to join our community, you can go to wop.com slash oasis alerts, or you can click the link in the description. It's the same URL. You go there, you get a seven day free trial and you get access to everything that we have to offer. And again, if you did like this video, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe. I want all the feedback, all the questions. I'll be answering them in future videos. Other than that, have a good day and I'll see you guys all in the next one.